God's words planted as seeds in our heart. Chapter 3 Sustained Growth God's words to us aren't laws and rules. They instruct us. These words we receive, what are they like? What sorts of things do they say to us? I have noticed that most preaching and instructing given by men in God's name concentrates on dealing with outward external things that can easily be identified as wrong. These are the things we can work out with our logical minds are wrong. And of course, in the New Testament, some of the lists of what the old nature gets up to are focused on these outward sins. But the Bible isn't a rule book that we can use to work out all that is right or wrong. Doing that is described as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. which ends in death. In the day of your eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Dying, you die. Genesis 2 What the Bible means can only be unlocked by the Holy Spirit. Seeds that come from God's word and get sown into our heart. And not the same thing as knowing doctrines or sets of rules. So instead of living by the tree of knowledge of good and evil... I prefer the tree of life. That is, living in such a way that Christ is supplying the very food of his word. Genesis 2 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This is the bread that comes down from the heavenlies. so that a person may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from the heavenlies. If anyone eats this bread, he will live to the age. John 6 But what I have found is that these words from the Holy Spirit are often little things. For God is testing us to see if we are willing to obey him in these small things. Initially, they are mostly thoughts which highlight an area of our heart. Which needs repentance before him in cleansing. we can usually expect events to then occur almost straight away in our circumstances. Which will give us plenty of opportunity to practice what God is saying. Often we don't recognize his answer to us. And then, a week or two later, we suddenly discover the nature of the circumstances that he gave us. This is God's way of testing how much we love him. But failing a number of times first is normal. So he patiently continues taking us through these cycles. All through our lifetime. Whenever we don't listen to God's words to us, we are not giving lordship of our life to him. One example is that we can expect him to give us words which show us how to stop being in charge of our own life. He wants us to stop being the originator of things we do every day. He wants to show us how to let him take over as Sovereign Lord. Our 
relatively brief life on this earth is our opportunity to determine whether or not we will live in His presence now. as well as forever without end. As long as we retain the rule, the lordship in our own heart, and remain strong and hard and unchanging, this will prevent God from coming to dwell in us as he wants to. He is seeking to replace our self-reliance with a need for him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5 We cannot expect that the words he gives us are simply about what we will find fulfilling for ourselves. More often, they will be about how we can be renewed inside our heart. So we are set free to fulfill what God wants. This is true freedom and true fulfillment. This cleansing of the heart is a lifelong experience which takes us deeper and deeper as we come to love and know God. His words are like light, like a sword, like a rock. His word is like a light. It shines and reveals the darkness inside that we were born with. You do well that you pay attention to the scriptures as to a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the day star arises in your hearts. Second Peter 1 
His word is like a sword. It cuts and removes things which shouldn't be there. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul and spirit, joints and marrow, as it judges the thoughts and purposes of the heart. Hebrews 4 His word is like a rock which we must learn to stand on. For when God shows us his word and we begin to see how he thinks and what pleases him, this becomes a firm foundation for our life. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Matthew 7 This foundation needs to be like rock, not sand. Problems and difficult circumstances will always come along. Trying to spoil what we have seen in God's word. Testing us. And if possible, discouraging us. Often it is actually God who sends them. If we have been learning to stand on his word like a rock, we will pass these tests more and more of the time. We will learn how to overcome no matter how bad it looks. Here, in the fire, is the patient enduring of the saints. Revelation 14 If we keep being worried when circumstances look bad, this proves that our trust isn't in God, except when things are going well. Are we standing on fragments of ideas that we know only because we've heard them from various other people? Not from God? 
This is like standing on sand. When circumstances in our lives test these things we believe, we have to know it is God we are trusting, not man and not ourselves. As we learn of his word in his presence, we are changed. Others who know God can help us by their teaching and encouragement, which will help these seeds grow. But it is important that we grow and mature and learn to receive the seeds from God more than from man. And that we learn to trust God so that even when things go all wrong, we simply say, what God has told us, and refuse to worry. These presentations are not designed to feed us. They are designed to provide a resource to assist us to turn to God and let Him feed us. Whatever He is showing us we simply choose to believe what he says. Then we obey him and take any steps necessary as God causes repentance and starts renewing and cleansing us. We aren't to put up with any condemnation or discouragement. We need to choose to believe God instead. Failing to do so is the sin that God is dealing with. These sorts of things are nothing to do with being told by other people that we must stop doing certain things. This is the process of taking up our cross, as Jesus did, and laying down our life, and letting God give us a new life. And when Jesus had called the people to him, with his disciples also, he said to them, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself. and take up his cross and follow me.
For whoever will save his life shall lose it. But whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the Gospels the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8 Adjustment is needed in our daily schedule. If our daily schedule is too busy to give God the time and priority, then these changes will be much slower. We have to deliberately choose to switch off from planning so much. We have to let God know that we will be making an effort to tune our ears to hear some little thing he is going to present to us. This is true worship. If we are so locked into applying our mind to the day's beckonings, there is almost no chance God will be given an audience. The Lord God, the Holy One, says, In returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. You said, no, we will flee upon horses. And we will ride upon the swift. Therefore the Lord will wait, that he may show favour to you. For he is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. Isaiah 30 The right conditions for the seed to grow Come as our faculties grow to hear God more. And to compound things, 
Why would we want to anyway? If the preacher is going to fill us in on what God is saying when we go to the next meeting. In these conditions, the seeds God is trying to plant may have trouble surviving. In the right conditions, as we give God the time and priority, we can easily end up spending hours in his presence. The need to keep the ears and eyes of our heart open so we can hear from God also applies to the scriptures in these broadcasts. If we don't seem to hear anything, there's no point in trying really hard. We can only ask God to show us something, then listen for what he says. It will often be a small, simple thing. So unless we are listening, we may not recognize his voice. What God is looking for is to see if we really do hunger and thirst for him. If we can't say that we do, then a time may come to get desperate. And cry out to him. We need to get alone and get vocal and noisy and active and even angry especially angry not necessarily angry at God although if that's how we feel then he knows it already So we might as well get it out. We'll end up in tears and then it will begin. The journey will have started. If we don't hear today, we will probably hear tomorrow. If we don't hear tomorrow, It's probably because we didn't notice what God said to us yesterday. Look, I am standing at the door and knocking. If anyone listens to my voice and opens the door I will come into him and eat with him and he will eat with me Revelation 3 
God is teaching us to cease from doing all the things we think we have to. Or we think God wants us to do for him. The result of simply listening to him is being set free from the sin that has ruled in our life all these years. Our own personality will remain, but the old sinful nature will be replaced by a new spirit life. Bit by bit, as God's word is birthed in us. At the same time, the faculties of our soul, which include our mind and our emotions and our will, and our ability to make judgments will be renewed for God's purposes.